Okay, this is where we left off at with our UVs completely unwrapped. Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go back to Maya Classic. Go to Object Mode. <clears throat> I'm going to go in here, just make sure everything's named. I'm going to go to Edit, Delete All by Type, and History. And then I'll select the group in the Outliner. Then I'll go to File, Export Selection. I'm going to make sure that Files of Type is set to FBX. And I'm going to save it in the Data folder of my Project folder. And I'll name this Screwdriver. And I'll hit Export Selection. And I'll go ahead and save this one last time. And by one last time, I mean until we apply our textures in Maya. And let's go ahead and open up Substance Painter. So I'm going to go to File, New. I'm going to make sure this is set to PBR Metallic Roughness. PBR is Physically Based Rendering. We'll talk about that later. File, I'm going to go to Select. And then I'm going to go to my project folder, my data folder, and then select that FBX model that we just exported and hit open. Document resolution. Remember how we talked about textures being in the power of two. We're going to change this to 2048 by 2048. So just 2048. And then uh, I'll hit OK. So it should load in. And similar to Maya, I can hit F in each one of these viewports to focus in. You can see on the left hand side is the 3D viewer. And on the right hand side is a view of the material applied to the UVs. All right. So we're going to go over texturing this in another video. In this video, I just want to get everything prepared for texture work. One thing that you should do before you do anything else is bake your uh, model. And in future projects, we will have a high poly to bake onto a low poly. And we'll learn all about that and why that's important to understand. Uh, but in this circumstance, we don't. But either way, we need to bake. So on the right hand side, I'm going to click on this texture set settings. Then I'm going to scroll down and where it says mesh maps, bake mesh maps, I'm going to click on bake mesh maps. Here we go. It opens up this baking window. On the left hand side are all the maps that we can bake. And we do not have an ID map to bake. So we're going to uncheck the ID map like so. Where it says output size, we want this to be 2048. We're not going to mess with dilation width uh, right now or apply diffusion right now. Um, where it says use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, we're going to check that box. And let's go ahead and do a test bake and see what we get. Um, I'm going to change my anti aliasing to subsampling 4x4. Four four. And I'll leave and I'll leave the rest as default. Then I'm going to hit this Bake Lambert 1 Mesh Maps. <clears throat> when this is done, I'm going to look for um, bake errors. And if I find any bake errors, I may just need to adjust my settings or adjust the UVs. So I'll hit OK. And I'm going to, so far it's looking good just from a quick glance, but I'm going to go in here and just kind of look around, especially where I know there are seams. I'm getting this uh, sort of distortion down here, and that's mainly just from, I think the model itself has this, uh, but we can paint that out. Um, so that's looking good. I know there's a seam right here, which we can't see right now, so that's great. Looks like we're getting a bake error right here. Is that that shell is shell the shell. Let's check Maya and find out where that shell is. Oh, yep. So <clears throat> I accidentally left this shell over here, and every time the texture is repeating in each one of these. So the reason why that wasn't painting properly is because it was over here, so it was just receiving the same bake as this. So this is a good example 
of, you know, checking your work and just troubleshooting. So I don't want to, let's go ahead and get this text density. And I'm actually going to leave this in the video um, just to display, you know, whoops, things that can go wrong. <clears throat> so I need to arrange this a little bit differently. This is very close to being big enough to fit it inside, so I'm just going to scale up a tiny bit. And let's see if that will work. I'll select both of these and move it up here. So if you followed along and you made the same mistake that I did, then it's a great learning experience, right? All right, so now that we've fixed this, if this does happen, that means you need to re-export your model, right? So let's do that. So I fixed that. Then I'm going to go to um, select the object, select the group, I mean, file, export selection. I'm just going to export over top, export selection, replace it, yes. Uh, and then let's go back to Substance Painter, file, new, select the file. I want the screwdriver. Change this to 2048, hit OK. And we're going to be looking to see if this changes. It should. Um, discard. Here we go. And then bake mesh maps, uncheck ID, change this to 2048. Check this box. Use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. Subsampling uh, 4x4 and bake Lambert mesh. And it looks like things are going better this time. Hit OK. And let's check this part. There we go. All right. Let's check this seam up here. It looks like it's looking pretty good. All right. So if things have baked properly, <clears throat> then on the right hand side where it says texture set settings there should be maps from the bake plugged in here and these maps are going to allow us to be able to use several of the tools inside of substance painter and those tools will uh, such as masks and um, generators uh, but they'll allow us to sort of auto detect edges and crevices and curves um, which will uh, help us a lot so once you're at this point, you were in a really good spot to start texturing. So uh, let's save our substance file. So file, uh, save as. I'm going to save this in the data folder of my projects folder. And I'll just name this um, screwdriver um, texturing and leave it as SPP and hit save. And in the next video, we will begin to actually texture our screwdriver. And I'll see you there.